welcome to Teach Brock Code, episode three of the introduction to Razor Pages. I'm really excited for today's because I'm actually gonna make it look like something. Uh, right now you saw how to connect a database, how to build models, um, how to make pages, how to do CRUD, stand all that up, but at a, you know, at your employer or where you'll be using this in the future, you have to be able to make your page actually look good. So today I'm just gonna do some quick styling. We're gonna create a splash page using that generic index page um, that I'm on right now. And then we're going to, so we're gonna get an image. We're gonna go to pexels.com. It's a free uh, photo stock. We're gonna get an automotive kind of picture because we're making an automobile log. And we're going to go get some fonts from outside of Visual Studio. So I'm gonna go to Google Fonts for that on the web. So let's start with the, uh, with the fonts, I guess, but yeah, let's go with the fonts. So I already picked out two fonts on Google Fonts that you like. What's nice is you click on the font on the front page and it brings you to this page and there'll be different styles. Um, some only have one style and you hit select style where it says remove the style, it would be select and it'll add it here. And then you could go back, find other fonts and it'll just keep adding them. So they're all in the same file. So this link it gives under embed is a link to all the files that you said you want to put in your project. So we go, we navigate to that link and you'll see we have two different fonts. So we could copy all this and uh, we can bring this real quick to our project. So we will actually create a new style sheet under CSS. Perfect, style sheet, and let's call that font. And add that in. Nice. Okay, and then come to the layout page and we're going to add it in. If you don't know how to do that, very simple. I know the style of the site.css was added for you. So it actually basically finds it for you. So as soon as I hit this, the equals, it will already be looking through your folder. So we could uh, just follow it, follow the chain or just mess it up like I did, but, and that's it. Okay, so you linked it. So now we get to use it. That's, that's the fun part, so. Okay, well, but where do we use it? So. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna run the project. We're gonna go in, you're gonna hit F12. F12 will open it up, the developer tools for your project. So in the developer tools, you could uh, inspect items, you could see the class names, you could play with styling on the fly, or if you're having issues with something not working, you could actually debug from here. Makes it a lot easier, but I like to use it to get class names. So the name of the uh, project in the corner was navbar brand that's the name in the layout page that's where we're gonna add uh the one font and i'm thinking we might actually add it right here and run the company name here get rid of this welcome get rid of this learn about and then for these we'll use the other font and that's navlink okay so that's pretty easy to remember so we will go to our css page now and the nice thing you don't have to close this just minimize that Changes on CSS, as long as you save the file and refresh the page, it'll change them. So to incorporate the new fonts from Google Fonts, underneath here, they give you the CSS rules for the families. So let's, uh, let's take this one. We'll just try this quick. And put that one in our nav bar. And then the other one I believe was called um, nav item. If I'm not mistaken, I thought that's what it was. It's not coming up here, but I believe it was an app item. And then the font family So that one, just grab that off the Google too. Sounded old there calling it the Google. And uh, let's give this one a font size also. Of 14 pixels. 
and you know, right here we'll actually add some padding too. It seems like the company name should be spaced out a little bit more. So let's add some padding to the right there. Let's go 20 pixels, it's not too much. And that should be beautiful. Let's see if that makes it look a little bit nicer. And there you go, he's got some new fonts, but it is spaced far from here. So we're gonna have to move that over. So, and that's, we could do that pretty easily. See, just by doing this, you can see, it should be actually under the container div. The container div actually will move that over. So we can go back into our CSS page. Let's add some stuff here. Let's have some fun. So we are going to add a dot container. And let's give it a max width of 100%. And let's do no padding there. Oops. Fat fingers today. Okay. Okay, so there you go. We can make that a little bigger um, if you think it'll look better for the company name, but I, I like it like that. And now let's, uh, let's close this. Let's go to the index page itself. Change this H1 to, to a P. Keep display four and let's, let's give it a name. Let's call it our um, automotive or auto, hmm, automobile, I guess. Uh, maintenance log. Naming for me seems to be the hardest thing. So, and we don't need that line at all. So, let's get rid of that. Let's save that. Um, you know what we need though? We need a background picture. That's something every splash page needs. So, let's go out here to that pexels.com I mentioned. It's really great, um, great free photos. And I already searched auto and uh, got some good ones. I'm gonna go with this one. It's very, uh, very generic, very colorful, very pleasing. Looks good to my eye. And save that. So now the cool thing is here, we could add that anywhere. So I went out and I added it already. Um, so I actually downloaded it twice, sorry about that. But I added it before. I added a folder under the, the library, uh, the lib, and I added an images folder there. And then the photo, you just right click on images, add, and just uh, add existing item and just whoop, pop it right in. But now we have to add it to our, our code. So let's, let's bring in an image here. So we are going to go image. Let's give it a class of uh, background. That's what it is. And what's nice with that class is if we give a different background to other pages, It'll follow the same template of the styling we do to that photo, so I think it's a good name for it. And now, for the source, Visual Studio makes this really easy, so just go where you put it, so. And that's it. And there's that. The problem, I think, right now when we run it, I believe our words now will be under the picture, which, and the picture, is massive so the picture is is huge and yeah it's pretty crazy looking okay maybe we should fix that so now is the fun part so now we get to go to our css page and we get to figure out why it looks like that so my best my best thing right there is we're gonna have to fix that background first so dot background I spell that right? Doesn't look right, but I think, I think it is. Okay, so for this, we're gonna want 
max width again of 100%. And that's because of the screen size. And then let's give it padding of zero because we want it to go to the edges of the screen. So that should fix that. Okay, come down here and our font was called display four. So we're gonna have to do something there to have it display on top of the picture. So let's come in here and go display four. Okay, and under display four, we do wanna add our new font family. So we're gonna add uh, this one because that's what we use for the company name up top, which we do have to change them to match. Actually, off topic, maybe I should do that now. Maybe what I put in here, because that's our application slash company. Let's, uh, let's put that everywhere. Boom, okay, beautiful. Okay, back to the display floor. So we do want to give it a position of absolute. Now we're going to run top and we're going to run it. Uh, this is how far from the top we want it to go over the div. Um, so from the top of the div, maybe 20% down because I don't think we're going to have other um, writing in there or other text. So let's just go with that. From the left, 50%. That way it'll be in the middle. And then we're gonna run transform, translate. And if, you, if you're uh, not familiar with this, um, I think they do a better job explaining it. So specify is a 2D translation by the vector TXTY, where TX is the first translation value parameter and TY is the optional second translation value parameter. So basically where it's gonna be, uh, I was explaining to it, uh, by a coworker, the picture on the screen is 2D, where you want it on top of the like image, because um, that's where, what I when I use that we basically put font over an image using this, and basically where you want it. So if you want it higher, lower, on top, that's what I believe, what I was told. If you, have a, if you know a little more about it, I, I can look it up, but if you know a little more, uh, put it in the comments. It just seems to, it always worked for me, so I never even bothered to, to read about it, so. Okay. And then we're gonna, let's put some padding on that so it doesn't push it from the middle. And let's make it big, but not obnoxiously big. So maybe, uh, there you go. And uh, I think it was black already, the color of the font, but just in case, let's keep it, keep it black if it wasn't black. I think it'll look better. And I'm not sure, but this should work. I think I missed one thing. Okay, I think I missed one thing here. Actually, that looks pretty good. I think I'm happy with that. And there's our, uh, our other pages, which need desperately need styling now. Desperately. <laughs> but this page, this page is starting to look pretty good. So um, I do like the way this looks. And then one more thing I could think of for this video on styling. I noticed on the layout page, when I scroll down, 2020 is hard coded in here. And I know from my career, um, that's a no-no because for every code change you make, usually you have to put in on a live system a change ticket, and that's a pain. You have to go through a process and uh, you know take stuff offline, and there's always a chance something could happen. So you don't want to do this. You want to um, code it in. So let's uh, date time dot now dot year, and that'll do the. Uh, the same thing and I think 
that's the name of it now. And then we don't need this because we're not gonna have a privacy page on this application. Okay. Okay. So everybody, thank you for tuning in. And uh, this has been Teach Brock Code with another episode. I am thinking for the fourth episode, um, we'll actually take a break from, from code and from database life and actually set up a GitHub. Um, I made a GitHub account and I've never used it. So I'm going to try to set it up in a video and sync this project to it. So that way, every time I make a video, there'll be files available for downloads. So as it gets bigger, if you're tuning in just for a certain part of it in the middle, um, you have the project without having to build the whole thing. Or if for some reason it doesn't work for you, you can pull over a working copy. So the next video will be GitHub, and I'm excited for that because it's new for me too. So thank you for tuning in to Teach Brock Code. Have a good day.